Hello there, this is Jeff Erdman, the EDS Inc. Shandon, and we've got another little project for you. I'm not going to be doing the work, uh, my nephew's here, and, and so I've got him doing the work that uh, we need to do. And this, this is a project that is really just for fun. We're refurbishing an old concrete mixer that uh, is, really should just be thrown out. Uh, this is kind of the frame in the back here. Uh, and we, we pulled the barrel off of it, we disassembled the barrel, and uh, what we found is that the, the shaft and the bearings that uh, the barrel turned on was totally destroyed. Let me grab you, uh, this, is the, this is the spindle that uh, the barrel turned on. You can see that this bearing is well, that's what it looked like when we pulled it out. So the bearing was totally um, gone on the front and the back. And uh, all the bearings in it, this one here, the, the bearing housing and everything was just all wiped out. So uh, you can see this is in bad shape. So we basically made a new shaft, drilled this out of the, uh, the armature that, that holds the barrel, and uh, we built a new spindle and welded it back into uh, that armature and so uh, uh, and we're going to put new bearings on it and uh, remount the barrel to it uh, we'll have to make a cap for the inside because the cap's gone and seal that up so that no concrete can get into the this this bearing on this side so uh, that's what our little project is and uh, we'll get going on it now uh, we've made this uh, shaft. Uh, we've got our uh, uh, bearing journal here. Uh, this here is just uh, 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 part of the shaft and then another bearing journal down here. And then this will fit into uh, another component back in here. Uh, so basically this is a non-turning -turn shaft. Uh, this, the uh, bearings will spin off of this. And uh, so what has to be done now, uh, this has already been cut down, sorry we didn't get any tape on it. But now what we're doing is we're, we're uh, preparing to put in some snap ring uh, to hold that bearing from moving. It's going to be a press fit, uh, but still we want to prevent that bearing from moving back. So we're going to put a, 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 a spring clip here and a spring clip here. We've We've uh, already marked it. You can barely see that line right where my finger is. And uh, the snap ring will be on this side of that line. Let me show you the old shaft. This is the old shaft. This is the uh, bearing uh, that was on here before. And you can see it, it had fallen completely apart. Uh, the shaft, you can see it's pitted and beat up, uh, the two snap rings. Uh, we had to change the configuration slightly because uh, we're putting sealed bearings on it. Uh, the bearings that were on it were an open bearing, but there was no way of lubricating them. And so uh, our decision was that we would put a, a sealed bearing back on. Now the, the problem with it, this is that uh, we couldn't get a bearing, a sealed bearing of the same depth so or the same ID. So we've got one that has a little bit bigger ID, so our shaft is going to be a little bit bigger. So we'll take some prep on this end, uh, where this goes in to, to uh, uh, but that's not a problem. We'll just re-drill the other part, and, uh, and then shove that through and weld it in. So as I said, this is a, a non-moving part. Uh, the bearings move uh, on top of that. So... Uh, so anyway, we've, this is a little bit narrower than the original uh, bearings that were on here. So we've changed the location of where these snap rings will go uh, so that uh, this bearing will be uh, the right location from this end to this end. So anyway, he's going to go ahead. Uh, my uh, nephew, uh, Pipe, Ian Piper, is here. And he's going to be doing the uh, cutting on the lathe. And Zechariah will be doing all the filming from here on out until this little project's completed.
Okay, we've taken and we've put a bitumous coat on this flange uh, and also on the, the whole uh, um, armature that we're, we put our spindle on. And uh, so we will slip this on over and now our objective would be to put our bearing on. And uh, to do that, uh, since it's kind of a, a press fit, we've made this uh, die. So basically what this enables us to do, it has the same inside diameter as the shaft, so it can go over real easy on our shaft. And it has enough depth in there so that I can get the bearing all the way down where it belongs. And uh, then we can put our uh, clips on there. So uh, uh, that's how we're going to press our bearings onto there. I'll just take a mallet and tap the top of this until the bearing is set where it needs to be. And we'll show you as we go along. So we're going to take and we're going to uh, lubricate the inside of this. These are cons these bearings are all um, sealed. But I just want to have a layer of moisture on there, I mean uh, grease on there, to prevent any moisture from possibly at a later time getting in there. So we're going to coat it in grease. And uh, I'm going to coat that inside flange with grease. That way it'll be seeping against a bed of grease there. I'm going to wipe the edge, edge away, the uh, stuff off the race. Okay. So we'll go ahead and we'll start this bearing. We'll do this journal. I need to go grab my mouse. I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got a bearing on the spindle. We've got uh, uh, our die that we're going to use to drive it. And uh, the inside walls will hit the inside wall of the bearing. The outside wall will hit the outside wall of the bearing. So we just line that up. Now once I get it past this, this uh, one uh, bearing race, the, the spindle is smaller, so it'll just drop down to the next race. Hopefully, there we go. And now let me get it started on the next race. Go. We just past where our, our uh, there we go. That's exactly where we want her. So our pin will be right here. Our spring pin will be right in there. And uh, then we can set on our next bearing. Let me, uh, I'm going to go grab something to measure that, uh, the, uh, what sort of size spring pin I'm going to need. So I'll be right back. Okay, we're putting in the snap ring. And it's now seated. Now we'll put the second one in. It will go right below the the race. Let's see if we can, we can let you see this as we put it on. If I let go of this thing, it'll fire away like a missile.
There we go. Goes on that uh, the mixed uh, What I'm putting is some Loctite on this. I'm going to clean this up. So as we press this uh, bearing on here, I'll help hold that on the raise. And it's seated right against the uh, spindle there. Finished out right flush with our cap. So now this is ready to go on the barrel. I'm going to grease the top of this because that'll be up against the barrel on it. And the other thing that we are going to have to do is. Uh, We're going to have to make a cap that will go inside the barrel and cover this up. So that'll probably be, uh, uh, will show us installing this and then we'll, we'll uh, show the, the spinning of that uh, hub that we have to put on it. There was one that came with it that was on it, but it was lost. So now we have to make one. Okay, we've got the barrel back onto the uh, shaft. Uh, what we found here, and you can kind of see it by the uh, video, the shaft is bent downwards. So we're going to have to bend that back up. It's, it's welded to this plate here, and uh, right here. And so it's just been pulled down from there. So we're going to uh, get a uh, uh, jack on here and jack it back up, get it straight, and then reinforce it with a piece of steel in here. Uh, to keep it straight uh, so it doesn't bend. Most This is uh, fastened to a very thin gauge, thin wall material here and so the, the thing that's giving it strength is this little plate here which isn't very strong. So we're going to reinforce all of that uh, before we begin. Okay this is looking on the inside of the uh, barrel. That's our new bearing down here. And what we have to do is uh, make a housing for this bearing uh, that would fit over this and uh, uh, that we could uh, 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 seal to prevent the moisture from getting through to that bearing uh, to protect it. And so uh, there was originally a little cap that fit over the top of it. Uh, that cap has been lost. And of course these bearings were just totally shot and this barrel was just wobbling all over the place. You could lift the barrel up and down. Now it's real steady and strong. Uh, so that's, that's an advantage. But we still have to cap that before we can call this job good. So we had the problem with the shaft being uh, at an angle like this. So what we did is we made a bracket here. Uh, we push this up with a a, uh, a little uh, jack and welded it to these legs and so that supports that shaft and keeps it perfectly straight running across. So now you can see that our gear is running right on uh, the gears of the barrel which is perfect. That's what we need. So uh, we've uh, painted this and all uh, 
is not black paint, it's actually undercoat, like you put on the undercoat of a car. And uh, so that'll help preserve a little bit better. So this uh, is just about ready to go to work. We just have to get the uh, uh, little cap on the inside made and then we'll have this ready to start turning concrete. That is really hard stuff. This is all a mystery metal. We don't even know what it is. But it's, uh, it's got some sort of a steel core. So this outside perimeter is, is super uh, hard and cuts very hard and uh, then a softer metal core and this is only about an eighth of an inch thick um, so it was some sort of shaft that they, they used a, a softer core and the outside they put a sleeve on it uh, to protect it uh, and even we when we looked at the larger piece there was a lot of uh, um, damage and what have you to that piece so even though this is extremely hard I mean it was our bandsaw would not cut it we had to come out here you can look down here and see a kerf on here uh, that's what we had to do to cut this little piece off is we had to kerf it and cut it because it was just we we couldn't we couldn't do it uh, with the bandsaw. The bandsaw would not cut through this outer shell. So we ended up cutting it with a uh, uh, what was that cutter we used? Uh, I can't remember. But anyway, it was a carbide cutter, and that got through it. And then we were able to to uh, it was a cutoff tool. Boy, my brain is just dead as doornails. So. We used a cutoff tool to get through it, the carbide cutoff cut tool, and uh, until we found out the right right way to do it, uh, I had to take one of the the tips from my uh, Monarch and modify it and put it in my holder for this one. So it was a heavier piece of carbide, and uh, once I did that, we were able to cut through it. Uh, with one pass, but I burned up uh, four tips last night, four carbide tips with the smaller ones that we were using uh, uh, last night to, to cut the kerf. We got one kerf done and we couldn't get the other one. We burned up all our tips. So uh, I used uh, one of the tips from the Monarch and that cut right through it just like it was nothing. But uh, very hard stuff. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and we're going to face this off. Uh, Piper's going to do that. Zach will keep filming this and then we'll uh, 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 cut this piece off and then turn it around and uh, uh, finish milling it. So all we have to do to this now, we're going to radius this edge once we face it off and then we're going to turn it around. We'll cut this piece off, uh, put it back into the jaws and then we'll bore this out and we have to make uh, kind of a hub for it to slip over uh, a uh, column inside the the uh, barrel and uh, we'll probably have some set screws in the side although I don't look forward to drilling through this stuff it was so stinking hard but uh, we're gonna drill some set screws through here to to hold it in place uh, to cover the bearing that's in the barrel so that's what we're doing here. So I'm going to let uh, the boys take over and Piper will cut it, Zach will film it, and we'll go from there.
Well, we completed it. We didn't get everything on film. We took uh, and made a bearing cap for this right here. This has just been put on. I forgot to film all of that part of it. Uh, they got the drilling of it, but not all the machining of it. The outside perimeter was sleeved with some sort of a really super hard material. Uh, the only thing that we cut it was carbide. and. Uh, the center part was a little bit softer, but it too was hard. Uh, we don't know what it was. It's mystery. It was a mystery shaft that we had in the shop. Uh, I'll take a uh, take you over and show you a piece of that here. And uh, but anyway, we 
we uh, made that. It's sitting over the bearing. It's sealed all the way around with silicon. There's a set screw holding it in so that it can't come off. And uh, the bearing is packed with grease on the back side of it. So uh, it, that protects it as well. So uh, basically we've got this, this part of it done. Let me take you over. I'll show you the shaft we took that little part out of. So this is the shaft. It's three and a half inches in diameter and the outside eighth of an inch is a mystery metal. I'm not sure what it is. It's, uh, it looks like it's uh, non-corrosive, so uh, uh, I, I think it's probably uh, some mixture of uh, metals to nickel and whatever else. I don't know what they use, but it's super extremely hard. And uh, to, to cut this, we had to first score it with a carbide uh, cutoff tool on the lathe. And so we got, took it in, you can see here that we took it in about a quarter of an inch. The skin is only an eighth of an inch. And then they pressed this inner core into the sleeve. And I'm not sure what metal that is, but it's softer than this, although it is quite hard itself. Uh, it took a while to cut, cut that off in the bandsaw. So uh, anyway, uh, that's uh, what we took that part out of. Uh, made it very difficult to machine, especially like doing the radius and that sort of thing. We Everything had to be uh, carbide tooling, otherwise it wouldn't cut it, just tool the tool. So, couldn't use high speed steel on it at all. Okay, so we've got her all finished up. She's ready to uh, test drive. We'll flip this on. cap on so all we have to do is throw some concrete in there and start mixing her up so sorry we didn't get a tape of everything that we did here uh, you know when you're trying to get stuff done sometimes you just forget to turn on the camera and that's what happened uh, sorry for that but I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, it wasn't really a remake it was just an upgrade of a cheapie now this is this is one of those super cheap uh, mixers we probably have got more time and money then it took to build this originally three or four times over. So, <coughs> but it was kind of a fun rebuild. It wasn't really a remake, it was just an upgrade. And now it, it's gonna be purpose to go to work. We have more time than money in it. We used mostly spare parts and stuff I had around the shop. The only thing it cost us is the bearing and the time. So anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for viewing EDS Inc. Shandon. If you'd like to see more of our contact, content. We have uh, uh, how many videos now, Zach? 66, counting this one. We've got 66 videos up to see. Uh, if you like this video content, then give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. Appreciate that too. We can always improve. So thanks much. We'll see you next time. <laughs> there you go, Zach. Give me a thumbs down, buddy.